Hi everyone, well done for clicking on this video for the first time. So this is, well my name is Scott Cosby, uh, or Scott, <laughs> I'm the head of maths here at Buswick and um, these videos are just going to be next to every single exercise uh, to help you complete that starting with confidence booklet. Okay, uh, generally these videos will be three to five minutes long but my objective is kind of to show you how things work um, and also just to give you lots of examples, all right? So there'll always be kind of three examples, at least, per problem. So, first one, first exercise 1A, simplifying indices. Well, we need to know some rules about indices in order to get going. So, <clears throat> we can do them as we go. This here, this 81, this has a power of minus a half. So what does that minus mean for starters? So if we have a to the minus one, that's the same as one over a, right? So that minus, one over a to the one, that minus <coughs> there, that literally means one over something, okay? So if I had a to the minus two, that means one over, because it's got a minus there, and then the a squared stays where it is. So a to the minus 10, one over, a to the 10, okay? So you see a minus in the power, one over. Uh, what does this half mean, okay? So if we have a to the half, that's the same as the square root of a. You see that two, that fraction on the bottom? You know, we don't normally write the two next to the square root, but that is, that is that, uh, <coughs> that is what that means. So if you have a to the one over three, that means the cube root of a, you see? So whatever number's on the bottom there, so a to the 1 over 4, means the fourth root of a, all right? So if you've got a fraction uh, in your power, then it means some kind of root in there. So cube root, quartic, uh, fourth root, whatever it is. So if you've got a combination here, this uh, 81 to the minus a half, that's the same as going, so this is the same as 81 to the power of minus one, or to the power of a half. So again, linking with our indice rules, you should see, I've seen all throughout school, this idea of a to the x, or to the power of y, is the same as the powers timesing each other. Likewise, you should know that a to the x times a to the y is the same as the powers adding each other. And a to the x divided by a to the y it's the same as the powers subtracting from each other. Okay? So, if we deal with that minus 1 first, remember minus means 1 over 81. And then we've still got that half on the outside, which means everything square rooted. Oops. So, everything square rooted. Square root of 1 on the top, square root of 81 on the bottom. So, that's 1 over 9. Okay? Let's do a couple more examples of that. So if we've got 9 to the power of 3 by 2, so if we remember this idea of a to the x or to the y, and if we remember that minus in our power means 1 over, and if we remember that if we have a fraction in the power, then it means whatever is on the denominator, that cube root or fourth root or something like that, right? <laughs> so in this case, we've got 9 to the 3 over 2, so again, Use this rule here, split each section up. So that's the same as 9 to the half, all to the power of 3. Do you see? And now you can start dealing with this separately. So 9 to the half is the same as square root of 9, all cubed, which is 3, all cubed, which is 27. So that's that finished. Here we've got for C, a third to the minus 2. So again, split it up if you need to. That's the same as a third to the minus 1, all to the power of 2, isn't it? Minus 1 times 2. So a third to the power of minus 1. Just remember that's everything, the whole third to the minus 1. So that's 1 over, and then a third. I always like to do a nice big uh, line underneath that that one well, when you're dividing fractions and hopefully remember this is still all squared hopefully remember from GCSE how to deal with fractions like this so one on the top one is actually the same as one over one isn't it one divided by one is one big line over your third all squared right 
Now, if you know if you've got a fraction divided by a fraction, hopefully you're saying into your headset that it flips over, doesn't it? So actually this becomes 1 over 1 times by 3 over 1, all squared. So that gives you 3 over 1, which is 3. So remember when you times in fractions together, it's top times top and bottom times bottom, right? So 3 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, and this is all squared. So, whoops, the pen's going a bit weird. So you've got 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, so lots of indices theory there. Uh, that's it for this. For this.